Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Samir from Intrapid Control Systems. Welcome to this talk uh, about, CAN, about fuzzing CAN and CAN FD uh, automotive ECUs and networks. Uh, fuzzing, when applied to automotive systems, can make the systems safer and more secure. Uh, I hope this presentation helps today, share some concepts and see what all uh, is on offer for fuzzing automotive ECUs and networks. So this will be my agenda today. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, these four items here today. Uh, first, I will briefly discuss uh, what fuzzing is and uh, why fuzzing is already becoming a part of standard verification and testing uh, for OEMs and ECU manufacturers. In the second part of the presentation, we will discuss some of the techniques and methods uh, for CAN and CAN FD fuzzing. And this should be really interesting for you know, automotive uh, you know, people are interested in automotive world. Third, I will show how some specific products from Intrapid Control Systems, which I have used, uh, can help you with your CAN and CAN FD fuzzing needs. These are the tools I have primarily used for developing fuzzing capabilities for OEMs and tier suppliers. So uh, this information will be also pretty useful for uh, people who are interested in these areas. Uh, Last, I will discuss quickest way to get you know onboarding on CAN and CAN FD fuzzing uh, in, in you know for automotive ECU uh, software development lifecycle. Uh, this has been a question asked to me in various times in the past. That hey, how can I start? You know, how what is fuzzing? You know, what we want to do? So I'm going to discuss some of those things uh, as last part of my presentation. Uh, fuzzing concepts and definitions. So fuzzing as defined uh, by OWASP or Open Web Application uh, Security Project is essentially uh, this. That's the definition defined by OWASP. So basically, idea is to send unusual, malformed, unexpected, and error-induced data to the target DUT. Uh, specific to the DUT functionality and performance requirement, uh, a closed loop control can then monitor the DUTs for any anomaly, uh, or any problems in the DOT. So fuzzing has been widely used uh, to find security issues and bugs uh, in IT software from actually many, many years. Uh, so the concept is not really new. Uh, its application to automotive is interesting. So that's why we, we kind of you know, like to add for, you know, to define what automotive ECU fuzzing is. So it's a highly recommended last mile test to reveal uh, any, any possible vulnerabilities in the network ECUs uh, for CAN and CAN FD, or there is a design strat or you know for CAN CAN FD design strategies or implementation, and it performed as a part of product design, development, and validation cycles. So that's where industry is going uh, in our experiences. Uh, this does not necessarily mean that tests should only be done at the end of the design or development and validation cycles. Uh, fuzzing essentially is now being considered as part of a uh, software development lifecycle. Uh, and so it is even, you know, a better strategy to include this testing as part of milestone releases of software uh, during the entire cycle. Uh, and that is how the importance of, uh, you know, fuzzing is, is there for, you know, automotive. It's actually well understood fact, you know, by we all of know, all of us know that you know, it's a fact of cost of fixing a bug uh, exponentially increases if discovered later in the development cycle. Uh, in, in fact, this additional testing uh, may not be a large impact on the cost. You know, and, you know, people are trying to assess, hey, you know, if we do can fuzzing, you know, can of defuzzing, uh, you know, and you know, test, you know, perform this kind of testing, is it going to be very expensive for me? Uh, so that's not entirely true. The impact on cost uh, is actually lowest if your existing tool chains support such testing. And you know some of the companies like ours, like Intrapid, we have recognized this uh, pretty early uh, in the game, and uh, this is alongside working alongside with customers. So today there are readily available tools for CAN and CAN FD advanced level fuzzing. Uh, this means for existing users of such tools, the adaptation is actually easy, and and for the new customers, it is something they can try uh, to look into for you know for advanced level of fuzzing on CAN and CAN FD. So uh, let's look at you know some some of the frequently encountered terms, uh, and I'm gonna just you know uh, 
you know, talk about, you know, as a concept here. Uh, these terms actually are very common in world of information technology, very common. You know, this is nothing new, you know, and most of the audience here, I'm sure is very familiar with it, these terms. But the concepts are important for people who are coming from automotive world, you know, for the things going on in the industry right now. So let's look at these four, you know, conceptual terms, you know, so to learn what they mean. Vulnerability. So vulnerability is a weakness in a system. So it could be, for example, a result from a design deficiency or an implementation bug. Uh, a vulnerability then actually could be exploited to obtain unauthorized access to the system and, uh, and then affect the system. Uh, one of the examples I can give is, for example, an unsecured diagnostic code or a weakness in a gateway module which could lead to unsecured access to a subnetwork ECU. That wouldn't be good, right? So uh, you don't want your, you know, down down the stream ECUs to be accessed through gateway unauthorized. So exploit exploit refers to an action that takes the advantage, you know, of a vulnerability. An exploit may reveal a behavior in the system which was not a design or implementation intent. In penetration testing, we want to expose maximum possible number of vulnerabilities and exploit them. You know, that's that's the purpose of, you know, penetration testing on CAN and CAN D. You want to exploit all the vulnerabilities before uh, an adversary does it. Attack vector. Attack vectors, basically, these are mechanisms. These, are, these refer to the mechanism and the targets or the paths an attacker can use to exploit a vulnerability. So, for instance, you know, an exploit may use an unsecured message vulnerability. This means the message on the bus, on the CAN bus, is not secured. And so thus it makes it, un it makes it vulnerable and uh, it could use attack vectors such as, you know, network management frames or uh, if there is time dependency of normal mode transactions between the nodes for correct operations. So those are the things a, a, an adversary can use and confuse the network or even cause uh, problems in the, uh, in, in the safe operation of the system in the car. Attack surface is a set of attack vectors, you know, essentially a group of attack vectors, you know, identified and, uh, you know, they are loosely related uh, to achieve an unexpected behavior in, in, a, in a DUT or an ECU or a, on a network. So attack server surface is essentially a group of attack vectors, uh, uh, you know, which are kind of related with each other for a specific, uh, you know, identifying an unexpected behavior in the, in the DUT. Uh, let's look at fuzzing concepts, uh, you know, what are the objectives and what are the definitions, you know, you know, some basic things before we get into, you know, deep dive into more into automotive things. Uh, so fuzzing in information technology has been prevalent for many, many years. It's nothing new, you know, it's been done there uh, many, many times, but with modern cars in the complex ADAS in autonomous systems, they run millions of lines of safety critical code. Fuzzing is actually now becoming extremely relevant for this automotive manufacturers, and we can feel it being part of this, you know, community working with OEMs and tier suppliers. Uh, with fuzzing, essentially, in the so the whole my talk here is gonna, you know, kind of relate what it means for automotive world uh, to do a penetration testing using CAN fuzzing. So when with fuzzing, we are challenging the software design and implementation through injecting most unexpected you know, semi-malform frames. It's important to note this concept in the terms for automotive. We do not want the frames to be rejected at electrical level. Otherwise it's meaningless. The fuzzing will be meaningless if the electrical system rejects those frames. Uh, we do want this, we, we, do, we do want to have enough validity in CAN and CAN every frames for them to reach to the transfer layer and Ultimately, you know, to the application layer, and they should pass, they should go past the object layer. So it should reach the application. So we want enough validity around that, it, you know, so otherwise uh, the fuzzing is not, not much relevant uh, to CAN. It must be noted that most of such frames are still protocol compliant. You know, when we are sending a CAN frame for fuzzing, it's gonna be protocol compliant. And so this is what we call as uh, protocol aware fuzzing. And in fact, this is most relevant to CAN technology 
because can in inherently in itself is very robust at controller and electrical level and it has excellent fault confinement so can itself is very well protected so you know so what should be our key objectives when it comes to you know automotive fuzzy essentially first you know uh, early identification of security gaps and software bugs you know it's paramount to reduce the number of field updates because of software issues and bugs we all know that recalls you know they are not cheap they are very expensive you know and uh, so for example to have an ota or a fota campaign or their update campaign for a bug fix is really least desirable you know nobody wants to you, you know do an ota campaign uh, to bug to fix a bug you know that's not something uh, you know ota campaign should be focused on ota campaigns are really to provide new features to the customers uh, there is tremendous need of testing these ota updates before they are deployed in the cars and that's when the can and can fd fuzzing uh, is very important thus the recommendation essentially is uh, to add the fuzzing first testing as part of sdlc or software development and release cycle uh, in automation tools are the most you know you know most important in this case vehicle spy software is a good software to uh, integrate the automation testing in you know, automated integrated testing for running the fuzzer tests at every release cycle and uh, that would be very prudent to do this to identify security gaps or software bugs in the target ecus or nodes and networks uh, second fuzzing it can be extremely useful tool to try to provide robustness to the system level validation are the system level fail safe mechanisms good enough against an adversary getting partial or full control of critical messaging between subsystem nodes uh, that's why system level first testing is also very very you know important uh, to be done third uh, I, idea is essentially again you know to to look for vulnerabilities on can and can fd node and networks and before somebody else finds it essentially you know uh, hack into your own network find out all the exploits you know use all the exploits uh, before somebody else does it uh, and uh, so yeah that's a, that's one of the important you know objectives uh, in automotive uh, world for using can and can fd fuzzing uh, lastly you know it's great test to just test the network and node performance against extreme uh, i would say unusual traffic you know it's in itself it brings the robustness you know so uh, you know adding robust robustness to this in vehicle network performance uh, is extremely you know useful technique uh, and you know that's why penetration testing using can uh, can fuzzing is getting more grounds uh, let's look at uh, some of the techniques and you know methods of how you can do can can fd fuzzing so i'm going to talk about few of them today and uh, this some of these come from our experience working with you know a lot of our customers you know and uh, you know doing some research on my own so i'm kind of share, sharing some of the things which you know the which is being you know practiced in in the industry right now so let's become aware of some of the key mechanisms when we are fuzzing uh, ECUs or CAN and CANFD networks. CAN and CANFD networks, as I said, are inherently highly fault tolerant buses. Uh, also note that traditional automotive networks have been embedded device networks, which have many electromechanical uh, sensing and actuation systems under their control. Thus, the identification of attack vectors and careful identification of first scenarios is probably where the most focus needs to be you know we have to be very carefully identifying all the attack vectors because these ecus control the vehicle operation the automotive operation and uh, it's important to identify all those possibilities for example you know we all know about denial of service situation uh, in it world but how do you define or how do you can you can we envision a denial of service situation in the context of ecu cluster uh, or more importantly how do we design fuzzing so that we find all the vulnerabilities before an adversary finds on an ecu cluster so some of the methods and techniques uh, which you know we could look into is you know uh, or here so for example, uh, 
it's important that we thoroughly study to identify all possible attack service surfaces. You know, some of the examples I can give is focus on payload data for bytes. For example, the payload, the content itself of the frame, the payload which is going to be consumed by different nodes. Uh, frame priorities, you know, those are based on the arbitration IDs on CAN. So can we see a situation where a design was dependent on a priority and an adversary attack changes the priority of that frame? Critical factors like dependency of internal ECU algorithms on, for example, a periodicity of frame. Uh, with needed data, such as these are the things you know we need to look into and identify and study. You know, if is my algorithm totally dependent on a you know fixed frequency CAN data, and can the adversary attack that and affect the algorithm and make a wrong decision in the car? These are good pointers to direct your first tests and uh, to cover all the you know aspects. Some of the mechanisms which would be useful. Uh, include monitoring the nodes for their abnormal outputs. And uh, such as, you know, like through diagnostic queries, you can query the diagnostics or you can stimulate the IOs, for example, and then observe the response on the network while you're conducting the fuzz or the first tests are being run. Uh, in ECU world, you know, getting a feedback from the system is the key to make sure, you know, the fuzzing actually gives the relevant results out. Uh, classical pervasive definitions in fuzzing, like uh, I would, like generational techniques. Uh, there are generational techniques. There are uh, there are mutational fuzzing. There is you know randomization. So for example, in generational fuzzer, new frames are actually created by the first tool. That's the concept in generational fuzzer. You know where you generate the tool, the new new frames from the first tool. This means an intelligent fuzzer uh, can establish a closer relation between generated first frame to the normally present frames on the network. And that's an important concept. Uh, to, to, to deceive a system, the frame should appear to be very normal, but carrying, you know, causing abnormal effects on the bus. So thus making such injected frames, uh, they have to be more valued from the DUT perspective. Uh, this kind of protocol aware fuzzing is actually most relevant for CAN or CAN FD nodes. Uh, in that, I've been talking about that, you know, in this presentation. Uh, mutational fuzzing also needs to be protocol aware uh, when it comes to applying applying to automotive networks. You know, that is not that much relevant when it comes to, for example, IT networks. For automotive networks, even the mutational fuzzing, uh, you know, technique needs to be protocol aware. Uh, so how do you do that? You introduce minute variations in the data through automated mechanism uh, in a tool in automation. And you inject those minute variation of the data uh, on the bus. Uh, and so essentially uh, to see whether the relevant nodes and ECUs understand and can take you know, right actions uh, when the data is not the real data but looks like real data. Uh, with randomizer, for example, a unique black, it's a unique black box, you know, technique uh, where you can realize, you can realize the first frame can really create a totally agnostic uh, situation to the, you know, arbitration IDs or DLCs. Uh, and, you know, you can, in, in the randomization, you can actually on the fly switch between CAN and CAN FD frames to see, you know, how, the reaction is from the network. And there are tools like Vehicle Spy, and you know, there are hardware tools from us, you know, NeoVI family hardware, uh, which allow, uh, uh, you know, they're very helpful in realizing, uh, you know, random, you know, randomizer for fuzzing. Yeah. Uh, let's look at some more techniques here. As I mentioned before, it's important to understand if the DUT response is valid or is it invalid or unexpected or abnormal, you know? So uh, in automotive world, rest bus awareness is the key. You know, how is the rest bus behaving? How are the other nodes behaving when I am, for example, doing a mutational fuzzer? Uh, so it's very important to get the feedback from the network, you know? Uh, another important aspect is what is called as, what essentially it's a new frame, you know, 
phrase, which is in, you know, coined recently, is perpetual fuzzing. So this again comes from the automotive concept. You know, in perpetual fuzzing, this means the fuzz testing is a part of your development life cycle. Uh, and these fuzzing configurations improve, uh, can be continuously improvised by adding uh, more and more unusual scenarios. One aspect of CAN and CAN of defuzzing it is, you know, it's conceptually that these tests actually do not directly depend on the DUT. Uh, I mean, DUT specifications and requirements do not affect the CAN fuzz test. Uh, this means first fuzz test could be independently created as a suit to apply to various different DUTs. Uh, some parts of such fuzz test mechanisms uh, as feedback measurement may only need to really change depending on what ECU we are talking to. Uh, for example, if it's an ABS ECU, I could measure its performance differently than if it's an airbag ECU. I'm going to talk more about this, you know, uh, you know more about vehicle spy software, uh, which has capability to run uh, first tests, uh, you know, first test execution engine and the measurement engine in parallel. You know, that's the key for vehicles, you know, that's a key which I've seen in vehicle spy software. I should be able to run my fuzzer execution engine in parallel to my measurement engine. That gives, uh, that gives very good control on, on the tests. And this remains, I think, a critical feature for successful capturing of the failures. Uh, lastly, a thorough consideration is needed if DOT is a gateway device. And you'll see a lot of gateways these days, you know, new network architecture uh, has, you know, OTA updates, you know, so there is a generally gateway module, a telematics module uh, and a gateway module. And these are very special characteristics. We, you know, I have had experience and we have, you know, tremendous amount of experience working with gateway modules uh, for very complex uh, scenarios and testings. And, uh, these gateway modules have special characteristics like FOTA or firmware over the air updates. Or if it could, it could be like a telematics ECU or a V2X ECUs. In these scenarios, uh, fuzzing could be a lot more complex. And, uh, and it may require uh, to run your first scenarios across multiple of clusters or networks at the same time, because gateway module connects to maybe let's say eight subnet subnetworks. And it's important to be able to monitor all of them while you are attacking the gateway module for your first testing. Uh, so in such cases, the response monitoring also requires uh, pretty advanced setups because you need, you could have a downstream ECU on a sixth CAN network uh, misbehaving because we did the first test or you know, we did the first attack on the gateway module. Uh, so these are all the things uh, happening in the industry, and you know I'm 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 happy to share with this community here. Uh, my concluding observation uh, on this particular part is fuzzing for automotive is more design oriented. You know, uh, it, 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 to be effective, it has to be design oriented. There has to be design idea beha behind how we want to fuzz. Simply sending random frames without like a closed loop control and without the ECU behavior aware monitors may not necessarily yield desired outcomes. We need to minutely observe what ECUs are doing, what network is doing when we perform this uh, first testing. Uh, but the technique itself is doubtless in the industry now, you know, is required, you know, for the further robustness of the vehicles and the, you know, uh, for the, of the performance of the vehicles in the, you know, in the field. Uh, you you know you finding a single vulnerability of in a post production environment when vehicles driven on the road it's very expensive to update it's very expensive uh, and it could be you know a safety issue for uh, for people uh, with here you know I want to I have spent a lot of time working on you know intrepid uh, vehicle spy tool and I want to share my experience uh, in using this tool for can fuzzing. Uh, this, this mostly this tool, you know, use has been used, you know, I've been using this tool with automotive OEMs and tier suppliers to, you know, see, you know, how, how they can fuzz their networks and ECUs. Uh, so Intrepid, you know, has created a set of tools and a framework. The framework is pretty involved framework where, you know, uh, you could set up a bench uh, for a feedback loop mechanism from the ECUs, from the DOTs. And you can perform extensive fuzz frame injection 
and execute the first tests on these networks. Uh, so some of the advantages which I have seen uh, for from using uh, Vehicle Spy and NeoVI family of hardware is it Vehicle Spy has a UI-driven fuzzing engine. This means even associating a complex complex test script with the first test doesn't require like a whole team of Python programmers. You know that is the benefit I have seen of customers using and you know myself using it for my own fuzzing uh, research. Uh, you don't need like tons of script creators or programmers, you know, who work on creating this, you know, thousands of scenarios, uh, which you can easily create in automation. Uh, and in in the in the perspective of you know automotive, all of these things must sit well with the current verification and valid, valid, validation teams. Uh, they need to be onboarded immediately with this. You can develop a whole team who just does the can fuzzing. So vehicle spy allows. Uh, those kind of capabilities uh, in, in the tool itself. And uh, Intrepid, you know, we as a company have been doing automotive networks for I think almost 26 years now. And, uh, you know, all the OEMs have been our customers, we've been working with them for years. So we have, I mean, we have applied all that extensive experience working with ECUs and networks and, you know, building high end, you know, high speed FPGA based tools. Uh, in our tooling for fuzzer is also designed totally around automotive ECUs and networks. One of the biggest factor uh, for automotive ECUs fuzzing is diagnostics. You know, diagnostics is also an integral part of an ECU and also an integral part of vehicle spy software. So while you're fuzzing, you can do your diagnostics on the diagnostic channel and query the ECU. At the same time, you can also essentially uh, fuzz the diagnostic channel itself. And that's the beauty of, you know, some of the things which we have done with the, you know, uh, our customers. So we, the native support for a transport layer is already there. Uh, native support for OBD or worldwide harmonized OBD is already there. Uh, some of these tools are already supported in Vehicle Spy and we were able to leverage all of that for our fuzzer. Uh, with inherent capability in these tools for multiple channel fuzzing uh, is very important. If DOT is a gateway node, I do want to monitor all the subnets at the same time, uh, you know, in the same, you know, in the same context when the same tests are running. Uh, at the same time, the tooling also need to be able to simulate some of the rest bus behavior because, you know, some of the ECUs depend their operation on the rest bus being perfectly fine, else it's going to shut down its transceiver. If it shut down its transceiver, we are not going to be able to fuzz anymore. So we have to kind of keep the ECU awake to a certain point where it accepts our you know, first frames uh, developed, and then you can attack the ECU. So rest bus simulation is also extremely important when you're fuzzing. So remember that, you know, if you have a network of ECUs, make sure you have also the capability to make sure the ECUs are awake and you know you simulate the rest bus behavior to make them active enough to accept our frames and uh, at the same time there is also support for measurement you know of physical quantities uh, or physical signals and ios for example i want to see if the ecu went through a running reset you know i can measure the current on the on the on the battery line i can measure how much uh, is the voltage drop across certain point across you know, certain connections on the ECU. Uh, so all those capabilities are also important when you're fuzzing on automotive uh, networks. Uh, some of the other features which I have used in the tool in, you know, in Vehicle Spy is uh, I was able to generate you know, thousands of test cases from uh, the database files. And this process itself, if done manually, could really take months and you know months of you know efforts by team uh, but vehicle spy allow allows to create automatic signal attack from the dbc file you know and you can create various different generational fuzzing test cases so you can generate any kind of range you want uh, and you know for mutational fuzzing you can make a small variation in the payload as an input of the dut try to override the real data uh, and then you you do these minor mutations, minor variations, and uh, you know see what how it goes. And Vehicle Spy has a lot of in, inherent capabilities I found and I've been using uh, 
uh, to support extensive test design around mutating known inputs. And uh, that's a very powerful use uh, in vehicle spy. Uh, the few other types of other techniques like randomization and some other techniques are very unique to vehicle spy. If you, uh, you end up using it, you know, feel free to use those. Uh, you can you can give your own seed for randomizer. Uh, you can have a vehicle spy generated seed. You know there are many various other things possible in this in this software. One other thing I found is support for database, and I just, you know I did mention a little bit on uh, ARXML supporting ARXML supporting DBCs uh, for automotives are extremely important because that's the real way of being actually be able to affect uh, the performance of the device or the ECUs. Uh, again, you know, the classical question I've been always, I had to add this slide just to make sure, you know, how you actually do all these things, you know, seeing some pictures, you know, helps understanding what can be done, you know, if you're design, you know, you're thinking to do, you know, penetration testing on CAN, uh, what are the actual things I'm going to do? So how and where one could start with CAN and CAN FD fuzzing for production vehicles or ECUs or your bench networks, you know? So you could start with some of these products, you know, they're available in the market, you know, uh, so Vehicle Spy Enterprise Plus, for example, is the software which has full fledged support for CAN fuzzing. Uh, you could, uh, uh, you know, you could NeoVR Fire 2, again, the device here, the, you know, uh, has eight CAN networks, so you can uh, simultaneously, you know, fuzz devices on eight CAN networks, you know, so this is the one, you know, I typically use, this is one of my favorite too. Uh, and, uh, uh, so it's a widely vehicle spy has been widely used in automotive software development for more than you know 20 years so our focus remains on the customers and uh, you know all the capabilities you see in vehicle spies because we've been work, working with our you know customers for a pretty long period of time now uh, about neovia fire 2 hardware uh, this has a multi channel can can fd and in fact it also has doip support it also has, uh, which I also use very frequently, is it has an inbuilt data logger. What that means is if I am I'm fuzzing in the vehicle itself, I can record the entire traffic in an SD card inside the device. And if I happen to cause an issue in the car, uh, shut down the car or put it in, you know, for example, limp home mode or what have you, or cause some multiple D, you know, uh, DTCs, then uh, you can record everything in the device itself. So you have the least latencies from recording on Windows or, you know, other PC or other mechanisms. So Fire 2 remains very useful device for in vehicle level fuzzing and also actually bench level fuzzing. Uh, this year, Intrepid also launched our latest, you know, platform agnostic, uh, very advanced tool that we call it, it's really next generation tool. Uh, and it's like advanced automation and testing for in vehicle networks. Uh, it's called Vehicle Spy X. You'll hear a lot about that in, uh, in, uh, in, in this event. And so I was also asked a question, hey, you know, can Vehicle Spy be used as CAN first tool? You know, and I'm going to answer that in, you know, the next slide. So I summed up a lot of information uh, I collected and tests I did with, you know, um, working with the customers, you know, internal bench level setups and things like that. And here is, uh, you know, my compiled information. And I think, you know, this is available for you guys to use it. Uh, and I, I compared the current capability support uh, in three different uh, in the situations, you know. I didn't do a lot of open source tooling myself, but this is the feedback I get from, you know, you know from the engineers who are using open source toolings and methods to do fuzzing on automotive. And so I'm gonna go through some of these things uh, with you guys here. And uh, so, so the support for like dedicated CAN, CAN FD fuzzing support. So I, my observation is it's uh, reasonably, it's low in vehicles by X currently. Uh, open source tooling is really, you know, limited and it's exceptionally high in vehicles by three enterprise edition. Now it's really exceptionally high because there is a set of tool which are CAN first tools. Uh, for scripting, I've seen Python support. We have very powerful support for Python in vehicles by X. And, uh, and, you know, of course, the open source tooling use Python extensively and they use other languages and other programming environments. In Vehicle Spy 3, it's a UI based scripting engine called Function Blocks. And uh, you can also do C, C++ programming inside Vehicle Spy for scripting. Uh, as far as maturity, I've seen very high maturity when it comes to Vehicle Spy 3 Enterprise again for CAN and CAN FD. 
Uh, and for fuzzing, you know, like how much automation is there, how much support, native support is there. So for vSpy X, it's under development. You know, it was, uh, this is what I was told by the team. Uh, and uh, automatic generation of fuzz scenarios is right now not supported in vehicle spy X, but it is fully supported in vehicle spy three and five edition. So you could generate thousands of thousands of test scenarios possibly through a single click. And uh, again, I was told, you know, that in Vehicle Spy X, uh, the team is going to use the same uh, technology in Vehicle Spy X in upcoming releases. Now, ARXML DBC support, very powerful support for, you know, in Vehicle Spy X and Vehicle Spy 3 Enterprise Edition. Uh, I haven't seen really very native support in, you know, there is an open source Git project to read a DBC file or ARXML, but being able to put like, you know, zeros across entire payload for all the received messages in a single click, you know, that kind of support lacks in open source tooling. Uh, programming flexibility and development, very high, I would say, in Vehicle Spy X because you have full control on each layer uh, independently uh, through programming environment, through API calls, through, you know, uh, different layered, uh, uh, you know, call through using Python. So very, very much, very powerful, very programmatic, programmatic uh, in this in Vehicle Spy X. Uh, I have seen the same thing in open source tooling because you have really a programming environment. There is nothing you know, automatically done uh, there. You have to develop everything. Uh, in, in Vehicle Spy 3, there is limitation of not being able to use Python. But personally, I'm a C programmer, so I'm happy with you know, Vehicle Spy 3. Uh, automotive native protocol support like XCP, UDS, or Autosar, et cetera, they are fully supported in, again, Vehicle Spy 3. And there is a uh, reasonably good support in Vehicle Spy X, uh, but again, like you know, looking for a UDS-based support in an open-source environment is kind of difficult and complex to create in itself. So I have not seen much support on that front. But report generation, we have very good support. In fact, in Vehicle Spy X, uh, there is a good support in Vehicle Spy Three. This is again, you know, I would say uh, this is an area where we are focused. And like I've seen both of these tools, you know, next. Next releases will bring a lot of you know test reporting. Uh, like potential for a tool to be part of the development and design uh, scenarios, uh, Vehicle Spy X is defined you know designed around it. You know you could actually run your first test in your development pipeline through using Vehicle Spy X. Uh, you know all those capabilities will run in the pipeline while you are actually developing your ECUs. Uh, this means you make a change in the ECU software and your first test could be run on, in the pipeline on vSpy X and test out you know, all your first scenarios. So this is very, uh, there's an exceptional support for this uh, to be able to do that. And I've seen very, there is almost negligible support for that in Vehicle Spy 3. Uh, this you still have to do drive through a text API or something uh, uh, in your pipeline. So I would say the support is low here. Uh, Cost-wise, uh, both the tools have a cost, uh, but I think, you know, as I said, you know, bang for buck, you know, that's highest for vSpy X because in future, uh, you reduce the amount of time your validation team is gonna write first test cases or run the test cases and look into the results. All of those things we are gonna eliminate through vSpy X for future. So it's a good investment now, uh, but of course, you know, that's why I listed all the things here, you know, based on what where you are, what your scenarios you are gonna do, and based on that, you could choose one of these mechanisms to uh, do your CAN fuzzing. Uh, one thing I should talk about is the OS support. Uh, Vehicle Spy 3 only supports Windows. So if you are running your, uh, for example, virtual ECU, which you want to fuzz, uh, you do want to go for Vehicle Spy X in that case, because you know we support Vehicle Spy X runs on Linux, Mac, or Windows at the same time. Uh, I mean, all three OSs are supported. Uh, hopefully this is, uh, you know, this may help knowing what capabilities are available now in different tooling and how, you know, industry is doing their fuzzing and what are pros and cons. Uh, I hope this presentation was useful to learn more things uh, for you guys. And, uh, well, that's it from me now, for now, uh, I think this last slide of my presentation and, uh, thank you very much for your time to, for, to listen to this. If you have questions, you know, uh, just ask me. Uh, if you have fuzzing experience you have worked on, you want to share with me, you know, if you found a issue in the ECU, let me know. I'm very excited to know all about that, you know. 
and uh, just share your experiences with me. My email ID is here. And if you have more questions on some of these products, I work very frequently. Uh, and then just send me a message. Thank you for your time.